Hey guys, Creep the Lazy Geek here, and today we're going to talk about synchronized dithering and how you can have multiple imaging trains. Like here, I have my main scope with my main camera, and my secondary scope, which is camera lens, with my secondary camera. They're both mounted side by side there on my EQ6R mount. It's all well, nice, and good, but how do I dither to, what, to make sure that when I dither this mount, so I, when I move the mouse in between exposures intentionally to kind of like move the stars around and in the end we'll stack and we'll average out some fixed pattern noises. Well, uh, if I'm moving that mount because this guy has finished its exposure, but that guy hasn't, then I'll be wasting one exposure from that guy. And then I'll have to find that exposure and remove it from my stack. And it's a lot of work. And uh, to avoid that, we can have something using Nina, the free and open source image capture software. I haven't heard of any other software really having that feature. So this is absolutely, you know, um, amazing to have that in free and open source software. But where basically the two uh, imaging rigs will be talking together and deciding when to dither together. So only when both have finished exposing, you will be dithering, which, you know, is a very handy uh, tool to have. So how do you do that? Well, first thing first, you want to open up Nina and you want to have your main profile. Now, I am loading a given profile here in Nina and I'm going to select the ASI 1600 you know, MM Cool, which is this camera here. And we're going to make sure that I have all of the information that are relative to my particular setup, right? So I have the filter wheel. Uh, that is this thing here connected. I have my focuser, which is the EAF focuser uh, back there. I have my uh, telescope, which is the EQ6R here. And this imaging rig here will be my master. So this is the one that will be connecting uh, to the mount um, to make everything work together. Okay, and now if I go to options and under general, I can see that I have the 1600 mm profile that I have that has all of my information. If I look under equipment, I can see I have my telescope there with its focal length, uh, the focal ratio, the settle time after the slew. I have all of my information. I have my filter offsets. Everything's in there for this main imaging rig. And I'll uh, create a second profile. So I'll add a new profile, which I will call, which I will first load. To load that profile first, I disconnected all of my devices. Now I'm loading that other profile and we're back to very default profile, which my eyes, it hurts my eyes. And uh, we're going to first change it to uh, a color that is slightly different to the main theme that I'm always using because I want to make sure that I, I can recognize which instance of Nina is controlling which imaging train because in the end for synchronized dithering and to control those two imaging trains on the same mount, you will have um, only one instance of Nina per imaging train. So I'll be running two versions on, of Nina at the same time. So first things first, I'm going to rename that profile. It's not going to be named default. It's going to be named um, ASI 533 MC Pro plus Canon lens, something like that. I, I'm not sure whether the plus sign, uh, pl plus character is accepted, but uh, let's try this. And yes, it is accepted. We're there. So I'm going to go into my equipment. I am going to connect to my um, ZW ASI 533MC Pro, which is here. I am also going to connect to my focuser, which is the ASCOM Canon EF lens driver from ASCOM Astro Mechanics. So this is the uh, driver that is provided by Astro Mechanics. There's a, another driver that I have uh, built myself. Um, so there's two of them. I'll just use the official one and uh, it is connected. I just heard the aperture actually being set. So let me sh make sure that for the moment I open it wide to f1.4. Yes, and now it's opened up again. And I don't have a rotator. Uh, I think I will not even connect the telescope. I don't remember whether I need to. We'll see if I need to. For the moment, I won't even uh, set up a telescope in there. I'm not going into PhD2 yet, uh, but this will be my second uh, rig. So if I go into my options under equipment, I'll put my uh, telescope name as Canon 50 
millimeters uh, f1.4. Uh, my focal length is 50 millimeters. My focal ratio is 1.4. Uh, my cell time after slew, I'll just make it the same as the main telescope cell time after slew, uh, because why not? And then I can choose the uh, information that is specific to my little imaging rig here. And my autofocus step size, I think I'll set it to 5 for the moment, um, with the initial focus offset steps of 4, why not? The default exposure time... Yeah, six seconds doesn't, doesn't sound too bad. There's a, a, a ZW duo band filter in there, uh, but the lens is very sensitive. We'll try with six seconds to start with. And I'll, I'll set up, you know, my uh, usual information in there, just like I always do. Uh, those lenses, it's, I don't know the backlash yet, uh, so I will not set anything in backlash for now, but at least it will be remembered uh, in the end. Okay, uh, so we are uh, there. We have, uh, I want to make sure that I have all of my options properly set. So, like the meridian flip enabled, I want to recenter. Actually, no, the meridian flip will be controlled by the main telescope. This is the one instance where we do not have synchronization between the two, so that when this telescope is ordering the meridian flip, that lens will be affected. It might be in the middle of the of an exposure. We don't care. So the auto meridian flip will be disabled for the secondary imaging train, uh, unfortunately. Then we have all of the standard settings. I like to have my noise reduction as high for the autofocus and my star sensitivity as high. We'll see how that works out for me. Um, plate solving will be using ASTAP as the main plate solver and the blind solver will be astrometry.net. Uh, so I'll be setting up the um, astrometry.net solver, but actually I don't need to because I will not be using that secondary imaging train to do either the meridian flip or the center on target. I'll be using the main imaging rig. So it almost doesn't matter what my plate solver is because I will not be using my plate solver. So I won't even care about this tab. And I think with this, we are ready. So we have this little uh, piece of equipment there that is getting you know uh, ready so now let me open up a second instant of nina so i'll shift click on the nina icon to uh in windows to uh to open up a second instance and the second instance i'll choose my 1600 mm profile right so we'll have two profiles with slightly different color themes there and uh my 1600 mm we're going to connect uh, the camera we're going to connect the filter wheel it's my very usual a setup. Um, we're going to connect my ZW focuser. We are going to connect my telescope. So this one is the master. So we connect everything to it. We're going to unpark it and I'm going to slew it somewhere uh, so that we can actually start, you know, PhD2. I want to calibrate PHD2 because I changed the setup, so I need to recalibrate PHD2. And then I'll show you how we'll c uh, connect to the um, synchronized uh, guider. So for that, I'll just go to imaging. I'll go to my manual focus target, which I think is this little button there. It creates a tab here. We're going to select a star uh, southern west. Sounds good. Regulus, really? Oh, OK. And we are going to make sure we are not parked and we're going to slew to target. I'm also going to open up the dust caps. I'm going to take a single five second exposure to make sure that we see something. And we do see something. We have a star field. We're not on target. I don't really care right now. I'm not going to loop my exposures for now. I'm just going to take one exposure from time to time. I'm going to now open up PhD2. So PhD2, um, a few subscribers have asked me to cover that in a video. I'll, I'll get to there. Uh, this is not the day. Uh, but it will come, it will come. So I will connect my ASI camera, so the 178mm, which is on my EVO guide. I'll connect the mount uh, to PHD2 once the camera has been properly connected. 
we're going to uh, take some uh, exposures, three seconds long, I need to remove the dust cover of my guiding scope as well. Um, yeah, I, my light is kind of uh, messing up with PHD2, but this is bad, I shouldn't be doing that. But let's, let's just uh, uh, do the calibration. I'm gonna force recalibration by shift clicking on this. And yes, I want to force recalibration. I'll see you when the calibration is done. Okay, and we have PHD2 actually calibrated, so I'm good. That way, that's a good thing done for uh, the future. Some of the clouds are gone. We might actually have a few minutes to take some exposures, but then I want to get narrowband because it's the full moon. Not that it makes much of a difference here in Tokyo. Uh, but okay, anyway, let's get into um, Nina. So this is my main imaging rig. This is a 1600 mm and so now what we're going to go to is equipment guider and we're going to choose synchronized phd2 and validate that and we see that we have one connected client to synchronize phd2 service then we're going to go to my second uh nina instance which is the aasi 533 mc pro which is behind the main, main scope here from your point of view and similarly i'll go into guider and I'll say synchronize PHD2. And why can't I connect? There it is, I can actually connect. The button is a bit weird to me. Okay, so now we have two clients uh, synchronized to uh, PHD2. If I go into sequence here, and I do not set center anything, you can see that this dither, every X frames or N frames is not available anymore. This is because dithering will actually just work for each frame on the main imaging uh, target. And you want to have the main imaging train and the secondary imaging train have uh, an exposure time that's multiple of one another. That way you maximize your e efficiency of dithering. So if I have, for example, exposure time of, we're gonna say, let's say 30 seconds for my main, uh, my main rig, I'm gonna take 10 seconds for my secondary rig. You know, I'm, I'm pulling those numbers out of my buttocks right now, uh, but I'm gonna put 10 seconds for the secondary rig. We're gonna say we're gonna take 50 frames, for example. Uh, my filter will be the current filter B because I do not have a filter wheel. And I'm not gonna start autofocus. I'm just going to take pictures. I don't care, I want to see the dithering actually happening. And then, what is this guiding? Oh, well, I don't really care. And then we're going to go to the main imager. And this time I'm again going to go to sequence. And uh, let me close that because I know that we have two connected clients. And this one will have frame times of 30 seconds. And we're again going to take 50, whatever. I'm going to stop it in the middle because I just want to show you how it works. And then we can start the sequences more or less at the same time. So I'm going to start this one first. And I don't even, you know, bother about cooling right now. And I want to start the ASI 533 second. And same thing, I don't care about the cooler. And I forgot something, so I am going to cancel. And I am going to go back to my 533 because I forgot to set under options and general, our imaging was it, my folder name. So let me set my folder path. So here it is, I set it to C Nina, but what I'll do is I'll also change my file pattern to have OSC as a header in there. That way my uh, secondary image train photos will be under an OSC folder for one shot color and we'll do the same thing for my uh, main imaging rig the master rig we'll go into options uh, imaging and I'll put mono in front that way I know which one was from the main imaging rig which one was from the OSC camera and now we can start our sequences so I'll go back to my sequence tab and I am going to click uh, play. Yes, I want to start my sequence for the master uh, uh, imaging rig. And then I want to start the sequence for, for the slave imaging rig. And we're gonna see when the dither actually happens. 
So right now there is no dithering. We'll have 10 exposures for the secondary, uh, 10 second exposure for the secondary imaging rig. It finished the first one, uh, but the, uh, it, the dither was not launched. And now suddenly it's saying wait, waiting for dither to finish because if I go back to the main imaging rig, it has finished its first exposure and it launched the dither, but it only launched the dither after the exposure from the secondary rig was over as well. So we're going to wait for the dither to be uh, over. I'm getting a lot of wind and I'm moving around as well, so it's not as uh, effective as it uh, could be. So we're seeing how it works for this particular setup where I have uh, two sequences uh, that are running in parallel for each of the imaging rigs. Now, some things to keep in mind. You will want to set your target and auto center slew to and auto center to, as well, of course, as autofocus on start and autofocus after a certain amount of time, uh, whatever, for your main imaging rig. Uh, you will want to set only autofocus for your secondary imaging rig because the secondary imaging rig is not connected to the mount uh, from Nina's point of view. And so it's the secondary really knows nothing besides exposing and connecting to PHD2 to know when a dither will happen and to know when to wait for a dither. That's pretty much the only thing it does. And that's uh, Nina has this uh, PHD2 synchronized server that allows this to do that. So the main rig is really controlling everything. It's the one that will do the centering of the targets. It will, it's the one that will control which targets are being imaged throughout the night. It's the one that will control any meridian flip while the secondary rig is just following around. It will just keep exposing and exposing and exposing and exposing with the same amount of time. It doesn't even doesn't even need to know about the targets that it is taking if you're taking multiple uh, targets one after another, which means that the second rig, it's a bit more difficult to know which exposure is related to what target if you do multi-targets. Also, um, the synchronized dithering, as I showed, forces you to dither once every um, single frame for the main imaging rig. But what's great is that my main imaging rig will be full narrowband, uh, so my three nanometer narrowband filters for that one, while the secondary imaging rig will just be like fair, fairly wide band, let's say wide band pass narrowband with the ZW duo filters and, and at a very, very good focal ratio. So it's very likely that my main imaging rig will have exposure times of maybe 300, 300 or 480 seconds. My secondary imaging rig will have like 30 seconds, maybe maximum. So, you know, it's all uh, depending. So this is how everything works. Of course, I'm moving around. There's winds. Uh, things are not, uh, you know, working very well tonight. There's clouds. There's the full moon. So nothing is ideal right now, but this is how it works. And I'm really liking the way that this synchronized dither works because then I can really dither while being as efficient as possible between my two rigs and taking as many exposures as I can from both of them. And that's pretty much it uh, for today. So this was just a presentation of the synchronized dither. Uh, also, please look at uh, the video that I'm linking to. This is from the guy who actually developed the synchronized dither. Um, he has a presentation of that on one of his videos. It was implemented in Nina 1.8 and it is absolutely amazing. So that's it for me uh, for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. Um, remember, to uh, look up at the stars while you're looking up at the stars and, or maybe after you've looked up at the stars, you may want to like and subscribe uh, to my channel so you can uh, watch any other new videos coming up. So I'll probably do something about PhD2 in general. That might be, uh, I'll probably cover like polar align with both SharpCap and Nina because Nina does have polar alignment functionalities. Anything else that comes up uh, in Nina as well, uh, covering uh, lots of stuff to cover, lots of stuff to do, lots of imaging, imaging nights to come. Hopefully the rainy season here will soon be over and I'll be able to start imaging those uh, crunchy nebulae in earnest using narrowband. Thank you so much and see you next time.